Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be doing a full face of first impressions and I'm going to be using all high-end makeup. So if you'd like to see my thoughts on some new products, please keep watching. So the first thing I'm going to be trying out is from Cover FX. I don't really try a lot of things from this brand, but I'm going to be trying out the Blurring Primer. This says a blurring primer that instantly minimizes the appearance of pores and fine lines to create a super smooth, flawless, airbrushed look. Apply every morning on clean face. Ideal to prime skin for foundation application. So I guess you can use it like a skincare or for a makeup application. I feel like the only thing that I've honestly liked from Cover FX that I would repurchase is the, I think it's called the Power Play Concealer. Power Play or Powder Play. I can't remember. Something like that. And normally I like hydrating primers, so I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about this. Oh. I didn't realize that it was going to be colored. So this is kind of like, ooh, ooh. Ew, it doesn't smell the best. Okay, so this reminds me of the Dr. Brandt Pores No More Primer. Because that one has like a color to it. They smell similar and yeah. This feels exactly like that. Which I haven't used that one. Ooh. Oh, okay. Like I said, I don't ever really use blurring primers. I always use like a moisturizing one, but this one looks really nice. So I'm just going to put that pretty much in my T-zone. Ooh, I like this actually. It made my skin feel really soft. So I do have some dry patches on my nose that it's kind of emphasizing. So we'll see what it looks like with foundation on top. But so far made my skin feel really nice. So the foundation that I'm going to be applying is the Becca Aqua Luminous Perfecting Foundation. This is in the shade Fair. I have a foundation first impression on this. I'll link that in the description box. I love this foundation. So I'm just going to apply this real quick and I don't like to use new foundations when I do a full face of first impression because one, I do dedicated foundation videos, but then also I want to use a foundation that I know that I like so it gives all the other products a fair chance. You guys, I swear, I've had the worst luck the last couple days trying to do my makeup. It's just, for whatever reason, my foundation is not wanting to set on my skin. Like, it just looks so bad. And then I remembered I saw this thing on TikTok, and it said not to mix a silicone primer with a water-based foundation. It was something like that. Yeah, so it says mixing a water-based primer with a silicone-based foundation on top or vice versa might cause, like, it to break up, and it just did that to me. And then I was like, wait a minute, that blurring primer probably does have silicone in it. So I'm going to start over. I wiped it off. So I'm going to go back in with this primer, and then I'm going to use a different foundation. So let's try for round two, and if round two still gets messed up, I'm done for the day. <laughs> So I'm going to try this foundation with this primer. This is the Lancome 24-Hour Makeup. Wear and Comfort Retouch Free Divine Perfection. Um, I have the shade 210 Buff In. And this is what it looks like. I think I've only used this a couple times. So let's hope this one works. Might be too light, but I guess we'll see. Oh, it'll be thicker than I remember it being. Okay, actually I think this is going to be perfect, hopefully. I'm going to use a sponge. I mean, the shade is definitely better than the Becca one I was using. I cut my bangs way too short. Oh my gosh, it's so bad. So I had to move the clips up more because my bangs kept falling back on my face. Okay, so this foundation looks a thousand times better on top of that primer. I'm so glad that I stumbled upon that lady putting that on TikTok because now... It just makes sense. Like, I guess it's probably just like common sense maybe, but I never even thought to not put a water-based or I guess like a dewy luminous foundation mixed with a silicone primer, but now it just makes sense because it would separate. So I'm glad that I saw that. For concealer, I'm gonna be trying out this Burberry concealer. This is in the shade Soft Beige number two, and it's the Sheer Concealer, Luminous Concealer. Oh, great. Good thing this foundation is kind of full coverage, right? So it is one of those pins. 
not my favorite, but let's try this out. This is another one of my like TJ Maxx finds. Oh, it's dark. I mean, it feels nice on my under eye, but it's not very brightening. It kind of has like a peachy undertone to it. I feel like I have the worst luck buying makeup at TJ Maxx when it comes to like high-end luxury makeup. Like, I just don't have the best luck with stuff and maybe that's why it ends up at TJ Maxx. So I don't think I'm gonna put this in a, the center of my face. I feel like this would be one of those concealers that I would wear on a no makeup makeup day, you know what I mean? Like if I just wanted something and that was closer to my natural skin tone and I didn't want to wear foundation but I wanted to kind of like conceal something, this would be it. But this is definitely not my shade. And it says 02, so you think that it would be a little bit lighter than this. But this is actually darker than my foundation. <laughs> it feels really nice. Like, it kind of reminds me of the Maybelline Fit Me. Like, it feels nice and hydrating on my under eye. I can still see stuff, so it's definitely not full coverage. It did say sheer coverage. But yeah, I feel like I would really like this on my no makeup makeup days if I was wearing it by itself. But unfortunately on top of this foundation shade it's just not doing it for me because it's darker than my foundation shade but it looks really nice on my under eyes i'm just gonna pop on a little bit of the kylie concealer honestly can't remember what i thought of this so hopefully i don't hate it this is in the shade pearl actually i like that concealer the kylie one i forgot i haven't used it in a while but i feel like the last time i used it i didn't really like it but it looks nice Maybe because it blended out easier on top of that hydrating Burberry concealer. I don't know. It's going to set my under eyes really quick and I'm just going to use my Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder. I'm low-key freaking out about wearing a white t-shirt right now. I'm like, oh, Like, I feel like I never wear white shirts in general if I know I'm about to do my makeup. So I'm like freaking out. But anyways. So next, to set the rest of my face, I'm going to be trying out this Ciate Extraordinary Translucent Powder. It just says Loose Translucent Setting Powder lightweight wait blendable lightweight super soft focus finish this is what it comes in it says apply generously to areas with concealer to bake and set makeup leave on three to five minutes and sweep off excess for a crease free soft focus finish lightly dust oil prone areas using a large fluffy brush for a soft touch matte finish oh okay well i don't really ever use a loose powder to set my under eyes except for that Laura Mercier because I feel like loose powder always like darkens my under eyes like it never fails I guess I should have read this before I decided to try it but this packaging is like really nice I don't know how I feel about using this to set my whole face I kind of like using like tinted loose powders to set my face like I don't ever really use a translucent setting powder anymore for my face so I'm going to use my Morphe E3. I'm just going to get this on the brush and press it in. Well, that definitely mattified. It's probably not the best thing for dry skin, but here we are. <laughs> definitely a uh, mattified my skin. I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like whenever I use translucent powder and only translucent powder, my skin feels kind of like grainy. Does that make sense? I don't know what it is, but if I use like the Maybelline Fit Me powder, which is like my favorite, it doesn't do that. If I use the Cody Airspun, it doesn't do that. But if I use like the RCMA powder or like I said, like something like this, that's white and translucent, it makes my skin feel weird I don't know like it did make me matte but I don't feel like I look overly matte for having dry skin I think if you have oily skin you would really like this powder this might be a little bit too matte for me but I also think this would be a good under eye 
setting powder. Like it did say that you could use it to bake. So I think, I don't know, maybe I would like this to set my under eyes and then just go back in with a brightening powder. But if you have oily skin, I would definitely check this out. I'm going to pop on some bronzer real quick and then I'm going to leave you guys to fill in my brows. But I'm going to be trying out this Too Faced bronzer. This is the Natural Lust Bronzer Satin Dual Tone Bronzer. So maybe this will bring back some life to my skin. This is huge by the way, but look how pretty it is. There's like a little golden peacock and what is that? Is that a highlighter? Weird. It's kind of like it looks shimmery. But when I swatch it, it kind of just reminds me of Hula Light. So I'm just going to swirl my entire brush in it and see what happens. I've been using this brush. I'm just wiping it off a lot lately for my bronzer and I love it. I don't know exactly what you're supposed to use it for, but it's domed. So it's perfect to like get into the hollows of my cheeks. This is a Morphe Y1. All right. So I'm just going to kind of like tap around, I guess. See what happens. I know I feel like a lot of people don't like shimmery bronzers I feel like a lot of people prefer matte but I like both like I don't really care I guess if I had to pick I would prefer shimmery bronzer but maybe that's because I have dry skin or I just like the look of it I don't know but yeah I'm just dipping into all of it and I like it And it smells like coconuts, but it's not like an overwhelming scent. It's just like a faint scent of coconuts. All right, let's dust some up here. Plus two, I feel like shimmery bronzers, not shimmery, but I mean like, what am I trying to say here? Bronzers that have like a sheen, like luminous bronzers, I feel like look really good on foreheads. I'm just going to add a little bit more because I feel like that Ciate loose powder kind of took away my glow. So I'm just bringing that back. Oh, I really like this bronzer. I could see a lot of people not liking it, but I like it. This is like the perfect like luminous bronzer. Like look at that. Ooh. My other favorite one that comes to mind is the Milani Baked Bronzers. Like, they kind of have, like, a luminous glow to them as well. But that just brought back some life back to my face after that powder. That looks nice. So I'm just going to finish up my blush and highlighter, and then I'm going to leave you guys to do my brows. But for blush, I'm going to be trying out the NARS Orgasm Blush. How beautiful is this packaging? I got this at Ulta, and... My very first high-end blush purchase from Sephora was the NARS. I meant to get the NARS Orgasm one, which is a shade, but I accidentally got the Super Orgasm, which is more of like a pink shade that has like some glitter in it, and I still have it. It's the only blush in my entire life I've ever hit pan on, and I still have it, so it's old, but I don't care. Anyways, um, the only other time I've tried this blush, it came in like a NARS palette that has like a couple, I think it has like three blush shades, a bronzer, and two highlighter shades. I can't remember the name of it right now, but I have used it on my channel a few times. But anyways, I wanted to buy like the actual like blush itself. And I'm going to assume that maybe they reformulated it a little bit or maybe it's just a smidge different than the palette that I have because the palette that I have is also older so yeah I just wanted to get like the actual blush to try out because everybody to this day still talks about it so I just wanted to try it out again so I'm just gonna wipe off my brush plus I feel like this blush shade would go really well with that bronzer since that bronzer has like kind of like a gold shimmery sheen to it and I love blush we all know this I always load it up but it's also the first thing to disappear on your face I feel like like within a couple of hours I feel like you can't really see blush even when I do load it on I feel like it's the first to like fade off my face so I'm just gonna load up on this today like I always do 
So I figured since I've already tried that shade before that it wasn't really like a fair first impression. Like it is, but it isn't, you know what I mean? So I want to try this and this is interesting because I know when people use this, they kind of only use like one shade, but I'm going to use all four shades how it says to. So this is the Huda Beauty 3D Highlighter Palette. It's three dimensional highlighter palette with a melted cream and powder, luxury blend of light reflecting pearls, buildable glow, effortless build buildability blendability <laughs> so i'm going to be using this one today and this is in pink sands i like her palettes because they always come with the, these little cards and i think they're super cute so this is what it looks like i already swatched the cream so it says number one prep apply capri as a base to smooth skin and amplify light reflecting pearls which is the cream shade and i don't know if you could put this on top of powder so we're about to find out it might just mess it up but anyways so i'm gonna use my finger to warm that up it's like a champagne shade so i guess i'm just going to apply this to the high points of my cheekbone. We're gonna be really glowy today because I'm gonna use all three of these. Um, I don't know why you really need this as a base because this is intense on its own, but hey, whatever, we're gonna use it how it says. I'm just gonna look up close and see if it pulled off that powder. Oh, no, I actually didn't. It looks like it set really nice on top of that powder. Okay, so now we go in with Dab Santorini from cheek to temple to set and bring out the pop. So that's this white shade. So I'm going to use a fan brush for this because I don't want a lot of it. I hate this fan brush, but we're going to use it today. Okay, Dab, so... I'm going to put my brush in there, and it says to dab from cheek to temple. Um, oh my gosh. I haven't, I don't think I've ever worn this much highlighter ever in my entire life. <laughs> wow, this is definitely that... Instagram glow. I, I saw someone on YouTube talking about how Huda Beauty makeup is designed specifically for like Instagram makeup, which I 100% agree. Like right when I heard that, I was like, true. It's not, I don't feel like it's made for like an everyday glam. You know what I mean? I mean, if you like the boldness of just everything, like she has full cover, like full coverage foundation. It doesn't work for me, but that's the most full coverage foundation I've ever tried in my life. And then she has full, full coverage powder, full coverage, because like everything is like extreme coverage, which I wish I could rock, but my skin can't handle all that. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to number three, which is Sculpt Apply Azora's Under Cheekbones to Add Dimension and Shape, which is this gold shade right here. We're gonna add that under our cheekbones. Mm -hmm. What are we doing? I don't know. Alright, I'm going to take this, dab into that shade, and it's said to go under cheekbones. So my, where my bronzer goes, I guess? Or under here, like, I don't really know exactly what that means. Maybe right under where you apply the highlighter oh my gosh i look like a mess like this would be good for like a beach look you know what i mean so i'm just going right under those other shades and then under my cheekbone because i don't know exactly what she means i mean it doesn't look terrible underneath my bronzer shade but i am using like a fluffy brush yeah, maybe I should see how she applies it because like I said, it could be like, okay, so under my cheekbone is right here, but then also that could be under my cheekbone. You see what I'm saying? So I'm not really sure exactly what that means. Okay, so next we're going to go in with the Sweep Ibiza on the apples of your cheeks for a healthy glow, which is the pink shade in here, which is perfect because I always bring my highlighter onto my 
uh, apples on my cheeks. So I'm just going to dip my blush brush in there and then apply that. We are definitely glowing. And this matches that NARS blush perfectly. I feel like this is one of those palettes that I would definitely use if I wanted to do like a beach day makeup, which normally when we go to the beach, I don't wear makeup, but I feel like this is one of those palettes I would really like for that. I feel like it would look really pretty in pictures and stuff. Also, I feel like this would look, so I like this. I actually really like it. Then, But I think the next time I use this, I'm not going to put this like underneath. Like I would rather just use like these two shades as a regular highlighter. I love the cream shade actually, but the cream shade is like perfect for by itself. And then I love this for like a blush topper. Okay, so I feel like that palette would be perfect if I had a nice tan, so either from the sun or from a bottle, and my skin was like super dewy, so like a dewy foundation, and then maybe like a cream bronzer, but like a lot of it. You know what I mean? And then I used that palette, and then I just like focused just on my skin and did like no eye makeup, maybe a little mascara, but maybe not, and then some liner and gloss like some like glittery gloss. I think that would be so beautiful. I might do like a tutorial once I get a tan with that. Like everything that I just described to you guys, I might do a tutorial next. I think that'd be beautiful, but so far I like that palette. Okay, so now I'm gonna leave you guys to fill in my brows and I'll be right back. So I'm back, my brows are filled in. I'm just gonna apply a little bit of my Cody Airspun just to clean up my bronzer a little bit. For eyes, the last few times I've done a full face of first impressions, I've been doing like two different eyes just so I can use more of the eyeshadow palette and really get a feel for it. And it's been working out for me, but let me know if it works out for you guys or if you just want me to do like the same eye look for both eyes or if you like that I've been doing two different eye looks. Let me know in the comments below. But today I'm going to be trying out this Celestial Thunder by Dominique Cosmetics. I was going to buy like the actual palette and then the smaller version of this palette came out in BoxyCharm so I'm glad I didn't buy it but it looked so beautiful like the full size palette but so does this mini palette so I'm going to compare it to the full size one and then depending on how I feel about this I might actually still get it I don't know but these colors look stunning so I was already kind of looking at it to get an idea so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to use the cooler tones right here so this one and these three over here for one eye and then the warmer tones for the other eye then I can use all of them so I'm going to start off with this eye first I'm going to go in with a shade called Lunar Eclipse which is this matte orange so I'm just going to be using this as kind of like a transition shade so I'm just going to work that into my crease I'm getting fall vibes and it's not even summer yet. Like, I'm so ready for fall. It's really pretty. I don't want to deepen it up too, too much, I don't think, because I want to kind of use it as like a transition shade. But I think I'm just going to put just a smidge more. Okay, now I'm going in with a Morphe 433 brush and I'm going to take Storm Dust, which is the shade right here, and I'm going to put that into my crease and a little bit on my lid. Ooh, that is pigmented. Okay, I think I'm gonna end up putting that hot pink shade in the palette on my lower lash line. So I'm just gonna put this Storm Dust shade all over my lid actually and into the crease. Okay, and then I'm just gonna take my finger and just apply that directly onto my lid. Ooh. And then I'm just going to add a little bit 
more into kind of like my upper crease because I think I'm going to do a cut crease and then use the shimmer. So I just want a little bit more depth, I guess, up here. Beautiful. Oh my gosh. Okay, I might actually have to buy the full size palette. That is so pretty. Okay, so now I'm going to apply some P. Louise base. And I'm going to do a semi cut crease because that's what I always do, it seems like. I'm going to let that sit for a second and then I'm going to go back in with Storm Dust and just apply that on top of that base just so it can like blend together start with the darker shade we put on my lid on my lid first and just kind of fluffing that over the base like so and then I flip the brush and go in with lunar eclipses which is the shade that I used for like my transition shade and then apply that on to the base that's up here and then I'll just blend down flip over the brush just kind of tap and blend and then if I need to go back in later I'll fix it some more okay so now I'm gonna take fireball which is this really pretty metallic shade and I guess I'm gonna try it with my finger first I don't know if these are pressed glitters or shimmers or what but it looks really pretty Oh, it's actually like a red pink shade. I thought that it looked it looks orange in the pan. But on the lid, it's pulling more like a pink red, which I think would have been more flattering with that kind of fuchsia eyeshadow, but it is what it is. I'm just going to take a flat brush so I can apply that on top of that P. Louise base. Um, I'm getting some fallout, so I think applying the pressed shimmers or glitters, whatever they are, is better with a finger. And then I'm just gonna take fluffier brush, I guess. And I, whenever I do like the cut creases and I have like a shimmer, I like to kind of like take the shimmer and just kind of fluff it over the line of where I have that base. Just so there's like a little bit of glitter just kind of going over that line. It just helps like mask it a little bit and just kind of like ties the whole looking together, I feel. So I just kind of like to fluff it over that. I mean, it's not as pigmented as I thought it was going to be, but it's still a really pretty shade. Okay, so let's move on to the lower lash line. I'm just going to go in with the shade called Lucid Dream, which is this pink shade right here, and I'm just going to put that on my entire lower lash line. is really pigmented I feel like it's gonna stain my under eye because I feel like reds and pinks always do but that's really pretty I think that might be the only thing I do maybe I can take I'm gonna take the fireball shade the shimmering one and I'm gonna put that on the lower lash line too I mean might as well right Like, I almost wish I wouldn't have done a cut crease with that fireball shade. But for real, when you hold the palette like this, it looks orange. But when you apply it, it's definitely pink. It looks really... So the fireball shade looks really good on top of this pink shade called Lucid Dream. But it does not look very good on top of these shades, in my opinion. So I kind of wish I would have just left my lid matte and then just did this on the bottom or vice versa, you know? But that's why we do these videos. Okay, so let's start on the other eye. So I'm going to go in with Zero Gravity. It's this gray shade. I'm going to use that as like my transition crease shade. Okay, 
It's not as pigmented as I thought it was going to be. I still like it though. It blends out really nice. I just thought it was going to be darker. And now I'm going to take the Black Matter, which is a shimmer right next to it. And I'm just going to apply that, I think, all over the lid. It kind of reminds me of MAC Black Grape. I wonder if that's where she got the inspo for this shade. Ooh, I love that shade. That might actually be my favorite shade in this palette. It's like a gray shimmer with purple reflex. And then I'm just going to take a little bit of it on a fluffy brush and just kind of pop that into the crease. Ooh, yeah, I like that a lot. Okay, so now I'm going to take the Mystic Ice, which is the teal shade. I'm going to apply that on this lower lash line. I mean, it's not, it's pretty, but it's not as pigmented as I thought it was going to be. I guess I'm going to take the Eternal Light shade, which is the last shade to use. I'm going to use that as like an inner corner highlight. Let's see, it's kind of chunky. This would be a really pretty all over lid shade, I think. And then I'm just going to use it as a brow highlight too, because why not? Well, I planned on it, but it just looks like glitter up there, so let's not do that. Okay. I'm going to go back in with the Huda Beauty and just take the Santorini shade for a brow highlight. I have a drawer full of these like mini mascaras I haven't tried. I used to love this mascara. This is the very first high-end mascara I ever purchased. It's the Benefit They're Real, and it's because I went into Sephora and I asked them for like the best mascara, which is probably just like the newest one that came out. I just thought that. But anyway, she told me it was this and I bought it and I loved it. So I'm going to try this MAC In Extreme Dimension 3D Black Lash. I've never tried a MAC mascara. And everybody always talks about the Giga Black Mascara, I think. Giga Lash, whatever that is. Super long and spiky tube, so let me curl my lashes. Uh, my first reaction is it's lengthening my lashes. It's not a very thick mascara, like it's giving me more of like a natural looking lash. It's nice, but I don't think I'd want to wear it by itself unless I wanted that like natural looking, if I wanted natural looking lashes for the day, then I would wear it by itself, but it's not like wowing me, I guess. It's okay. I'm glad I have this little deluxe size and I didn't buy it for full price. This would definitely be a good mascara to like use to prep your lashes for falsies, but I don't really like it. It's just like an everyday mascara, unless I had like really long, gorgeous lashes to begin with. Like I need a lot of help when it comes to my lashes because they're not very long and they don't really want to hold a curl unless I use waterproof mascara. So this is okay. I mean, this side held up better than this side, but. I'm definitely not going to try to attempt to put that on my lower lash line because this wand is massive. I'm just going to quickly line my lips and I'm using this LA Girl Perfect Precision Lip Liner in the shade Cafe. For lipstick, I'm going to be trying out this Bobbi Brown lipstick in the shade Posh Pink, 
Lux lip color. I bought a bunch of these when they went on sale on Sephora.com. I don't think I've ever tried any of them. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. But this is just like a really pretty like bubblegum pink. It's really pretty and it's going on like really creamy. Has like a nice like shine to it. But I think full price, these are like 40 bucks. It's something crazy. And I know I bought them. I think I want to say I got all of them for like $12. Which to me is a fair price. But I don't think that I would spend 40 bucks on this. You know what I mean? This is a really pretty like wearable Barbie pink shade though. Like it's not like super hot pink. It's not like well bam in your face. Like this is really wearable. Like I could wear this every day if I wanted to. So I do really like the shade of this. And the formula is really nice. It's interesting. It kind of just kind of like, it kind of just like melts into your lips. So for gloss, I'm going to be trying out this Dior gloss. I know I don't have boxes on anything because I haul them and then I throw the boxes away. But I'm going to attempt to keep the boxes for everything. So when I do sit down to film a full face of first impressions, I can read you guys like the box or you can see what the packaging looks like. So mental note, I'm going to start doing that from now on. But this is a really pretty container and I don't really buy a lot of Dior stuff. I think I might have like four things um, and it's all lip products, I think. Oh, I have the um, highlighter, but other than that, I think I only own lip products from them. But this is the... I cannot read the bottom of this for the life of me. But I think it's in the shade 10, and all I can see is it says Dior Lip Attic Lip something. Oh, Lip Maximizer. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. It's written on the side right here. Hyaluronic Lip Plumper. I thought it would look really pretty with this lipstick shade. Ooh, not a big fan of the doe foot. I always, always put my lip glosses on the back of my hand I just the idea of getting the wand all gross like I don't like so this is like a pretty pink shade with pink it's like pink and gold glitter but it's supposed to be a lip plumper yeah there's like different shades of like pink glitter in it Which I think would also be really pretty like by itself like not even on top of a lipstick and it does have like a minty feel to it if my lips feel tingly or look bigger by the time I get done oh I can already feel the tingle it doesn't really feel like a tingle though it just feels like a minty like you know like the Too Faced slip injections like that burns and like ugh. like this one doesn't this one's just like a slight I wouldn't even say it really tingles. It kind of feels like, you know, if you're chewing mint gum and you lick your lips and then you get like cold air blown on you, that's what it feels like. I'm going to go fix my bangs real quick and then I'll be back and I'll let you guys know my final thoughts on everything. Okay, so you can see my bangs are like way too short. They were actually like an inch shorter than this, believe it or not, like a week ago. But I think because I've been taking the biotin that it's making my hair grow longer and faster thank god but frank was watching me when i was doing it so i think he was making me nervous and so i just did like a complete hack job they were so uneven i had to keep cutting them shorter and shorter and shorter until they were even and that's why they look like this like they don't look as bad but they need to hit at least my eyebrows for me to like them but yeah this is what we're working with um Anywho, so I figured now I will go over everything that I used and let you guys know my final thoughts in no particular order. The first I'm going to be talking about is the Dior Lip Maximizer Lip Plumper in the shade 10. This is beautiful. I think it looks really nice on top of that Bobbi Brown lip color. It's still tingling. I don't feel like it made my lips like all that plump. I guess it's a really pretty gloss do I think it's necessarily worth the price no that's probably because I don't really have a lot of Dior things so um I think there's cheaper lip plumpers out there that are definitely drugstore prices so if that's what you're specifically looking for if not you just like a comfortable gloss that has a little bit of pretty glitter then I would definitely recommend this like I'm going to continue to use it because I just like how it looks like to me it's like a unique shade and that's why I splurged on it I wasn't necessarily buying it for the lip 
plumping part of it but I do think it's beautiful do I need like every single shade of this no not at all this will probably be the only product that I buy from this lip maximizer line but it is really pretty then we have the Burberry soft beige number no. two sheer concealer I actually really like this am I glad I didn't pay full price for this yes I would be very disappointed because I like full coverage concealers um, I think this will be really nice to wear on my no makeup makeup days if I just want to do some under eye concealing or if I just want to conceal like my t-zone like where I have like my problem areas then I think this will be perfect like I think this would be perfect for me in the summertime because I don't really like to wear a lot of makeup like I would rather wear like a glowy moisturizer and then pop this on my under eyes and maybe like my nose and like my chin maybe not maybe just my nose and my under eyes just to like balance things out I think I will really like it in the summertime but again yeah I'm glad I didn't pay full price for this because I'd be really disappointed what I purchase this Probably not because I feel like I could just find something drugstore that's like similar, but I do like it. Then we have the MAC In Extreme Dimension 3D Black Lash. Uh, if you want natural looking lashes, definitely check this out. But <laughs> I'm glad I have this deluxe sample and I didn't actually buy it because I would be really disappointed. So yeah, pass. Next up, I have the Bobbi Brown lipstick in the shade Posh Pink. I think it's beautiful. It's a really wearable pink, so I will continue to wear it, especially with the Dior lip gloss. I think the pair look amazing, but I don't think I would pay full price, like 40 bucks for another lipstick, unless it was a shade that I felt like I couldn't find anywhere else. You know what I'm saying? Like, it feels good though, so if you like to splurge on more expensive makeup, then I would definitely check out these Bobbi Brown lipsticks. But for me, I feel like I could get kind of like the same at the drugstore, you know what I mean? But I am very happy that I got a bunch of these on sale because I do really like them. It's just for the price, it's a little steep. Next, we have the NARS Orgasm Blush. I love this. Oh, almost dropped it. I love this. I think it's beautiful. It's really pretty. Yeah, there's not really much to say about it. I just really like it, so I'm glad that I decided to pick up the full size. Then we have the Too Faced Bronzer, the Natural Lust Bronzer, Satin Dual Tone Bronzer. I love this too. So if you like the kind of glowy bronzy bronzer look, then I would definitely check this out. I think it's going to be so beautiful for the beautiful for the summertime, and it looks really flattering on my forehead. And I feel like Especially if you like an all matte look and then you just want to like fake the glow, you know what I mean? Like if you don't want to use like a dewy luminous foundation, this will be your best friend. Like I love this. I'm going to continue to use this. Then we have the Domini Cosmetics Celestial Thunder Palette. Love this too. I'm a little disappointed in the shimmers though because I just thought they would be more pigmented. Maybe if I got my brush wet or used a glitter glue, maybe they would. But I mean, I don't really want to do all that. But I would, I guess. The mattes are really pretty. They blend it out really nice. Everything is really pigmented. But I know I told you guys if I really like this palette, I would buy the full size. And I think I'm just going to pass on the full size and just stick to this guy because I'm not like... I'm going to continue to use it. I do like it, but I'm not obsessed with it enough to buy the full palette. Next, we have the Ciate Extraordinary Translucent Powder. This is okay. Is this something I'm going to continue to reach for? Not necessarily. It's not my favorite powder, but I am going to try to use it to set my under eyes. Like, I use my Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder, but I don't necessarily like it to set my whole face. I just feel like it left my face feeling a little chalky but I do still think um, if you have oily skin you would actually really really like this especially to bake with next we have the cover effects blurring primer this reminds me like identical like this reminds me so much of the Dr. Brandt Pores No More Pore Refining Primer. I used to use this all the time and I have dry skin and it really worked for me. This reminds me of this. So if you have this, you don't need this. Or if you have this, you don't need this, vice versa. But I actually really like this for my dry skin. So this was good. So the last thing I used was this Huda Beauty 3D Highlighting Palette. I love this. I would definitely repurchase this. I love the cream. The cream is enough on its own. But I really just like the whole idea, the whole concept of it. It really is like a... I don't know like um what's that candy that has like the it's like that coconut candy that has the brown pink and like white color in it that's what this reminds me of but I really like the whole idea of using different highlighter shades to really like get that like dimension like on your cheeks like I love the whole concept of this so I definitely want to do a tutorial like I was telling you guys like around this palette 
So that's everything for this video. Let me know if you guys have tried out any of these products in the comments below and what you think. Please subscribe if you haven't already and please don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this first impressions makeup tutorial and I will see you guys later.